but you have to gather in that best practice from elsewhere to, to understand that you don't have to reinvent wheels along the way. Um, but even before you got here, you yeah. traveled here with your own expectations. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little about what those expectations are and if they've been met? Well, actually, I, this is my second time in Guyana, and it's, both, it's been both times in a kind of work capacity. And the first time I was here was to promote the referendum that the Falkland Islands people had undertaken. And in that, we'd, we'd decided that we wanted to remain a UK overseas territory, and it had an overwhelming result of 99.8% to stay in that relationship. Um, so I came here with a little bit of prior knowledge about what Guyana was about. But what was really interesting is in the 11 years between these two visits, seeing the difference of this country, the journey that you've been on as a people and as an economy, and how you know, you've taken that opportunity into new industry and invested it back into the environment and back into the people. So that's something that uh, are saying we want, really want to do. So it's, it's interesting to see it in practice here. But 11 years later, could you say the Guyanese yeah. parties have sort of renewed their support for the Falkland as the UK overseas territory and what has their own not been in that regard? So we've had, we've had strong support from the Guyanese government um, over a number of different years and through different iterations. So ultimately one of those other things that we share very much in common is this large neighbour on our border who's threatening our people and our territorial integrity. So the Falklands has that in Argentina continuing to claim that our people don't exist and that we are part of their territory, which is simply untrue. And we know that Guyana has similar challenges with, with Venezuela. So there, are, there is a strong sense of self-determination that I think does link our two countries together because ultimately it's about what the people want for their future and that should be respected on international fora. We've had support from the Guyanese government in the past as well and we're really hoping to, to maintain that into the future. If we could talk a little more specific about mm -hmm. who you've met in terms of government officials yes. during this trip. So I had the great honour yesterday of meeting with, with the President, um, but also with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of, of Natural Resources and Tourism, and I've also just this morning been meeting the Director of Fisheries as well, because as, a, as an export economy, the Falklands has got a lot that we're doing. And with that being my specific area of expertise, there's, there's a lot that we can share and hopefully exchange into the future. Excellent. And even as you prepare to depart, what could we yeah. expect as the outcome from this trip in terms of something tangible? It may not be next yeah. week or the next month, it may be in a few years now. Yeah. What are the expectations now? Well, I'd say um, the high level expectation coming in was to try and get support in international fora for the Falkland Islands as people of self-determination, to get that the voice from the Guyanese government speaking out to respect human rights, essentially, which we know that you're very proud to do anyway. But I think, and what I was secretly hoping for, which I'm hoping is also something that's happening, is that we can develop more relationships that aren't based around you know, our our international um, geopolitical situation, actual things that we're doing on the ground that can actually benefit people and benefit each other and just you know share and exchange as two countries should to learn from each other. I think that there's more worth in that um, in the long run than what is essentially sometimes yeah the other fora. <laughs>